Someone might say that uh, I uh, have a personal interest in this, to replace these 190 product, million products. And yes, it's true. I have actually two personal interests in this. And uh, the first one is uh, absolutely I want to sell more products for Electrolux. But the second one is that I also have children. I also realize that I'm borrowing the world, the globe, from them. And I want them to have a good living going forward. It is a true win-win-win <coughs> situation, this. I mean, electricity bills first for the consumers will actually be reduced by replacing these products. Carbon emissions will be reduced. And uh, the politicians can get help to achieve part of uh, their targets, of their environmental goals. And uh, this is our contribution to uh, the challenges that we're facing. You know, we don't want to be part of a problem. We want to be part of the solution. Many companies work hard to develop new technology to uh, tackle environmental impact. A new and efficient technology have already been developed in, uh, as a result of that in cars, in appliances and so on. But the problem here, it's not the technology at this time. It's actually that the consumers are too slow to pick up on this. And I can assure you that uh, there are many people out there who say, well, this product has worked for me during the last 13 years. It will continue to work, to work the next 13 as well. And I really love the product, so uh, why should I replace it? And it's absolutely the wrong thing to uh, the wrong conclusion. It's a natural one, but it's the wrong conclusion. So. Uh, they keep on using these uh, old products, and I would say until they fall apart. And that is causing an unnecessary impact on the consumption. And in Sweden, we uh, are not the best in class here when it comes to uh, uh, appliances in the kitchens. We uh, don't have the most modern fleet in Europe. We're actually one of the worst in Western Europe when it comes to the age of uh, uh, household appliances. And uh, one could ask, why is this? Well, I don't want to point fingers, but I think one of the reasons is that uh, low energy prices that we've had in the past, together with high rate of publicly owned and, and, and rented flats in this country, or a couple of reasons. Therefore, I believe that, uh, you know, there is somebody, the owner of the apartment, who has to invest in a new appliance. The consumption is then paid by the person renting the flat. So there are different pockets, and therefore the incentive is not there to, uh, to change this. And therefore, I believe that politicians here, as in course, have a role to play to introduce various incentives that uh, help consumers take the right decisions for them and for the society. And there are many examples of this. For example, uh, rebates on environmentally friendly cars. That we take as quite natural. And various tax incentives uh, have been introduced in uh, quite many countries now to uh, speed up the replacement of old and energy thirsty product, products in the field. And one example is that when you buy a refrigerator, the most efficient refrigerator in the Italy, you get a tax rebate, not, no cash out or anything. You get a tax rebate of 200 euros to buy that very low consuming refrigerator. And currently this has also been discussed in Brazil. There are other countries uh, like Norway, Holland and so on that have introduced these, uh, even the US. And it seems that um, there has local initiatives are not enough to reach these significant uh, savings. Politicians in Europe should join forces 
and introduce such in incentives in many countries, because then we would have a great impact. And the impact is actually, as I have described, quite big. And uh, it seems to me that the politicians have really not realized the great potential of this. I mean, let's not talk about uh, increase the uh, the, the more populistic things like increase the tire pressure and save an ice bear. Let's do something practically. Let's replace these things. It's at our doorstep. And as I have pointed out, our main focus have been and will always be to develop products with lower environmental impact. But we're also challenging our own organization. <laughs> it's not enough just with the products. You know, about, in the product, about 25% uh, of the environmental impact comes from the manufacturing and transportation. The rest, about 75%, 70-75%, comes from the usage of the product. But nevertheless, we have to take down the environmental impact and the energy consumption in our own facilities. And uh, this we do as well. And our goal is to, uh, now at this time, cut energy consumption by 15% throughout the Electrolux group. We will save money and we will save um, carbon dioxide emissions. And that, we will cut it down with about 100,000 tons per year. And this is the same uh, emission as uh, would come from 22,000 cars. Annually. So to conclude here, Electrolux has been striving and will continue to strive to be a sustainability leader. And we intend to do everything in our power to stay ahead within this field. I can promise you that um, we will continue to develop energy efficient and uh, low and water efficient products and solutions from here on as well. Modern and efficient technology is already available to uh, the consumers. But the problem is that they are not picking up fast enough. This means a waste of energy and water. And uh, therefore, we need to help. We need the help from politicians to speed up the shift to new and efficient technology. <coughs> Thank you for listening.